Lions of a 500 season. The Temple Owls, though still in the rarefied air of the top 20, the game plan is tried and true. Tonight, a pair of Philadelphia coaching institutions battle for city supremacy. It's the Owls and the Explorers next. It's one of the oldest rivalries in college basketball. The 84th meeting of the Owls and the Explorers is next. It's icy on the outside, but heating up on the inside. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski for Temple and LaSalle tonight. Eddie, that always means the great matchup between John Cheney and Speedy Morris. Well, both John and Speedy grew up in Philadelphia, coached on the high school level. They watched big five games. Now they get to coach in these games. They both respect each other, but they'll go at it. Both very intense coaches. Temple 11th in the nation, of course, because of their wing guards, McKee and Jones. What a combination. Well, you're in for a treat. I know it's cold out there, but snuggle in because these are two of the best players in the country. First round picks, be general managers out there. Who would you take first, McKee or Jones? Both can score the basketball, handle the ball. There's not many negatives when you talk about McKee and Jones. Now to match up against them, a very good Eastern backcourt in terms of Kareem Towns and Paul Burke. How good they are, a good measuring stick tonight. Well, against this matchup with John Chaney, the defensive Temple plays, Paul Burke will have to distribute the ball, make good decisions. Kareem Towns will get his points. He'll shoot a lot and from distance, and they were teasing him tonight. If he gets 40, he may have to get 60 shots up there to get that 40. But believe me, he fires from downtown. Now, John chaney has been saying right along he needs to get some inside offense to go to that next level. Is the man likely to be one Derek Batie? Well, Derek Batie can do it for him offensively inside. He's better on the offensive skills than would be William Cunningham, their center. He's got to give him a little bit of that offense because he must complement him a little bit outside. The outside shooting's there. They have to get some points from the inside. Eddie, we saw the best game of the college career of one Turk when Mott had 26 points against St. Joseph's. He must step forward inside for LaSalle. Well, they have to get some offense. We know about the scoring outside. Turquin Mott had a big game in the last game out against Evansville. Get some shots inside. Turquin Mott and Speedy Mars is, makes bad decisions tonight. You can't make bad decisions against John Chaney coach team. Well, look for some junk defense, a little bit of everything. The kitchen sink thrown in, too. We'll come back with the starting lineups live from the Philadelphia Civic Center in just a moment. Big Five Basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield featuring the new personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. By your local Quality Plus Ford dealer. Remember, five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks sold in America are at your local Quality Plus Ford dealer. And by Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. The Yellow Pages 9 out of 10 use the genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages from Bell Atlantic. Forever new, the number one car care system named best product in America three times is now available to you through this exclusive TV offer. Forever new's car sealant is not harmful or abrasive, and unlike most waxes, you just wipe it on and wipe it off. It's that easy. No laboring, no rubbing, no work. Plus, where waxes only offer minimal protection from the sun's harmful rays, Forever New Sealant gives you 100% protection for a full year. Plus, you also get Forever New's leather and vinyl cleaner that always leaves a great shine without an oily or greasy residue. These cars are worth a million dollars. The owner only uses Forever New. It's time you did, too. Call now and get both the sealant and leather and vinyl cleaner for only $19.95. Forget the wax. Keep your old car looking like new. Order Forever New today. Call now 1-800-548-7100 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling to Forever New, P.O. Box 2424 H, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. Inside Sports Magazine. If you're into sports, you already know the score. But for the real story, you've got to get inside. Only Inside Sports gives you the color, the commentary, the controversy, the consensus. Doug Collins and Bill Walton analyze the Shaq attack. Thomas Boswell proves why Barry Bonds is the best player alive. Bob Trumpy sizes up the road to the Super Bowl. You'll get 10 issues of Inside Sports, including our preseason preview editions. You'll also get our spectacular swimsuit issue. 
And with your paid subscription, a special bonus, eight issues of Basketball Digest. No real fan should be without it. Order your subscription now and save over 63% off the cover price. A total of 18 issues for three monthly payments of only $7.31 each. Get more than the score. Get the inside story. Get inside sports and Basketball Digest today. Call now, 1-800-841-4466. Several thousand brave souls have ventured out into this cold night at the Philadelphia Civic Center to watch some high-quality college basketball, LaSalle against Temple. For our starting lineups to the voice of the Civic Center, here's John McAdam. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Philadelphia Civic Center, home of the LaSalle University Explorers. This evening, LaSalle University presents the Temple University Owls and the LaSalle University Explorers. Let's meet the starting lineups first for Temple. At a forward position, a senior, six feet, six inches tall, from Pompano Beach, Florida, number 21, Eddie Jones. And the other forward, a sophomore, six feet, nine inches tall, from Dallas, Texas, number 50, Derek Batie. At the center spot, a sophomore, 6 feet 11 inches tall from Augusta, Georgia, number 22, William Cunningham. At the guards, a junior, 6 feet 3 inches tall from Salem, Massachusetts, number 4, Rick Brunson. And at the other guard, a, a senior, 6 feet 5 inches tall from Philadelphia, number 23, Aaron McKee. The head coach of the Temple University Owls in his 12th season is John Cheney. The assistant coaches, Dean Demopoulos, along with Jim Maloney and Vic Karstarfin. And for the LaSalle University Explorers. At a forward position, a sophomore, six feet, six inches tall from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 21, Romaine Haywood. At the other forward, a freshman, six feet, six inches tall from Hyattsville, Maryland, number 31, Derek Newton. At the center spot, a freshman, six feet, ten inches tall from Alkmaar, the Netherlands, number 50, Jasper Van Teesling. At the guards, a junior, six feet, three inches tall from Philadelphia, number 11, Kareem Towns. And have you ever guarded a junior, six feet, one inch from Wincote, Pennsylvania, number 23, Paul Burke. The head coach of the LaSalle University Explorers in his eighth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The assistant coaches, Joe Mahalik, Joe Bryant, and Rich Prendergast. The official for this evening's game with the ball, Tom Clark. He's joined by John Clark. Those Temple Owls come in 11th in the nation at 9 and 2. They hold the opposition to 37.5% from the floor. And that is the ticket to the tournament and has been for years for John Cheney. For Speedy Morris's club, now stuck at 507 and 7. They've won two of their last four against the Temple Owls. Not too many can say that. Give me a sense of the decorum for this one tonight, Eddie. Well, very difficult. John Cheney wins 75% of his games. Speedy Morris has done well in a sense. I think those two games might have come at McGonagall Hall, mm -hmm. too. Not many people go to McGonagall Hall and beat that man right there, John Cheney. A tough assignment for LaSalle. They're young to play up against his matchup zone. Speedy not happy with the way they're playing their defensive end. Tonight, their shot selection will be suspect. Here's a look at your... Quality plus forward starting lineup. You'll note William Cunningham, the big man of the middle, making his fifth consecutive start. Jason Ivey comes off the bench. And Derek Newton making his 10th start of the season. That means that Turquin Mott will indeed come off the bench. The LaSalle Explorers in their home white, trimmed in the blue and gold as we get set for the 84th meeting between the Owls and the Explorers. It's the Owls in cherry trimmed in white. Cunningham and Van Teesling were set for basketball. One to Ricky Brunson. That's Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee. Right away to the post they go for Batiste. Short. And we'll stay here. But John Cheney likes to try to establish the inside right away going inside to Petit. 
The T had a good shot, it's got to nail them down. LaSalle will zone up off the out of bounds. We'll get a sense of what their defense is going to be like. It looks like a straight 3 2. Cunningham alone makes the little four footer. And when you say a little four footer, a very easy direct entry pass inside the William Cunningham. Turn around, not anyone, not a hand in his face. Temple noted for that matchup zone defense. They like to funnel shooters toward the middle of the floor. Towns for three. Long. Good rebound, Aaron McKee. Just out jumps Romaine Haywood. Jones. Arrow 21. McKee. It's a high low set, but T at the top. Cunningham on the weak side low post. They're trying the 3 2 because they have the three outside people McKee, Brunson, and Jones, and they're trying to match up with those three people. Again, leaving the inside open. Something has to give. Shot clock's at five. McKee will load and fire. Aaron McKee. And what Speedy Moore is the head coach of LaSalle did not want to happen early. The inside has been established, and there you saw the bomb from the outside. Aaron McKee with the shot clock dwindling down. A 40% shooter from out there. The first five points are Temples. Romaine Haywood had a piece of it blocked by Eddie Jones and off the hands of Haywood. Check out Speedy Morris telling Derek Newton that he's got a baseline defensive responsibility. Now they're bringing the zone all the way out the half court. Temple very good in handling the basketball, only turn it over nine times a game. They took 10 seconds to get it over just in time. Brunson steps up to McKee. Entry pass, McKee. Everything is working so far for Temple. Three players have scored, and that's not the outside of Jones and Brunson. Dirk McKee has two, Cunningham has two. Easy entry passes inside. LaSalle has struggled defensively, and they're showing it early in the first half. Opponents hit it 47%. Towns, the leader, blocked to Newton, left-handed. So it's just Eddie Jones. Yeah, the good defense again. Eddie Jones got the block shot there. One of the leaders for the Temple, but Derek Newton, a freshman from Hyattsville, Maryland, on the spot. Methodically get the ball over the timeline through the Owls. Again, Betty at the top, Cunningham weak side. Most teams like to play Temple man-to-man -man defense. They know where their rebounding assignments are, and they know that the three outside people normally kill them, leaving the inside people open. LaSalle not noted for their defense. Speedy trying the zone pressure right now. McKee on Van Teesling doesn't get square, but drills it nonetheless. But they are not bad defense. Van Teesling was right on Eddie Jones, but again, Eddie Jones hangs in the air. It's a 9-2 Temple advantage. Burke falling away. Catches nothing but glass, and Brunson's got a floorboard. Left hand pass deflected. Towns, loose ball to Jones. Finds McKee spinning and scoring. The Sal might need an early timeout here. Right now, they're trying to go up and down the court with the Temple Owls and getting smashed. Well called, Coach Stefanski. It's 11 2. Temple has come out on fire at the Civic Center. Look what you did. Uh, what I did? Uh, just who do you think you are, man? Who do you think I think I am? Easy, fellas. What would he do? All the yellow pages? Just any yellow pages? Genuine yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania yellow pages from Bell Atlantic. Flyers, the Sixers, the Big Five. The best home team sports lineup on TV this January on Prism. The Flyers skate in six games, including matchups against Wayne Gretzky's Kings and Brett Hull's Blues. The Sixers hit the hardwood nine times in a lineup featuring Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic and Patrick Ewing and the Knicks. And the Big Five rumbles at the Spectrum with a LaSalle Penn St. Joe's Temple doubleheader. Home team games you won't see anywhere else on TV this January on Prism. Don't miss any of the action. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Well, here Eddie, fortuitous ball deflection winds up in the hands of Aaron McKee. Eddie Jones gets the deflection, keeps his head up, sees his partner Aaron McKee, and that close to the basket, Aaron McKee is going to nail it. On this play, McKee is going to make the nice pass as McKee wings it around right to the middle. But look at the middle, not a white shirt around, and 
That is easy for a 6'9 guy to lay it up. Temple, five for six at 83%. And LaSalle is almost as cold as it is outside, 20%. And five assists for the Owls, so they've been distributing the ball well. Speedy, the early timeout. So we check out Philadelphia Pride, Aaron McKee from Simon Gratz High School. Romaine Hayward gets an open three. No, Towns, an offensive rebound, will bring it back. Burke from 24 feet. And that's what LaSalle needs, some offense. If they're not going to play the defensive end and try to score with Temple, they got to put the ball in the hoop, and they finally did, 11-5. You don't see many teams press successfully against Temple. Is this the token time pressure? That's all it is to try to run that clock down, that 35-second clock, so maybe they brushed their shot a little bit more. I'm sure that's what Speedy's thinking about right now. Temple doesn't throw the ball away. At the high post, Petit turns and fires. No. Kept alive Newton into the hands of Haywood. But Larry, they'll give that shot all night. A 14-foot jumper by Petit. They'd like to see that happen. Cross-court hook pass. Haywood towns for three. He's not even close. And Jones, standing still, has a rebound. <laughs> so Aaron McKee will step away. In the corner, Brunson. With a good spacing on the perimeter by the Al guards, always 15 to 20 feet apart. Petit once more, drop step, lay it off Jones. This is a layup. But the good entry pass into the middle, the backdoor cut by Eddie Jones, good pass. Eddie Jones shaking his head, he knows he should have put that ball in the hole. Next time he'll slam it home with the jam. Van Teesling in the middle, doesn't look at the basket, but Towns will. A good ball movement by LaSalle that time down the court as Green Town gets his first points, a three-pointer narrows that gap to 11-8. LaSalle has shot almost 200 more three-pointers than Temple, and I guess that's the way they'll either live or die tonight. The whole key is that LaSalle's going to shoot the ball well from the outside. They have a chance to upset the 11th-ranked Owls. If they don't shoot the ball well, they'll go home with the L. Again, Batie high post. Cunningham weak side. Brunson lays for Jones. Baseline spin move, Eddie Jones, short. And Burke will let it roll. There's John Cheney, always uh, emotional, effervescent. Well, that's not a happy man, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he had an 11 2 lead, 6 0 run for LaSalle, and they're right back in the ballgame. Cross court towns, Haywood, and Burke. Way out, Paul Burke. Nope, Eddie Jones high. And good floor balance, LaSalle, they're back in good shape. Paul Burke will take the three-point shot, only shooting 30% from that three-point range. LaSalle has already tried six three-pointers. McKee around and out, strong side board, Van Teesling. Won't be much fast breaking tonight as it's through the hands of Towns. Not a bad idea for LaSalle to push the ball up the court. That was a controlled fast break, break by Paul Burke. Good pass, Towns has his, kept his eyes off the ball looking at the Temple defense, but why not get the ball down quickly before Temple puts that great matchup into place? McKee and Jones, they don't even need the point guard, Rick Brunson, to break pressure. They were in a little, they're trying to take Brunson away from the ball. LaSalle feels if Brunson doesn't have the ball most of the time, they may have a chance. We've yet to have a foul whistled in six and a half minutes. High post Petit, stripped to Cunningham. In trouble. And he's bailed out by an official as the foul will come on Derek Newton. Here's you're, William working. You're right by that, Larry. William Cunningham could not get control of the basketball. There's Newton's arms inside there. Not straight up and down. Got a hand on the wrist of William Cunningham. And he'll go to the line for two where William Cunningham doesn't like that three throw line. Only shoots at 25% clip. Cunningham just three for 12. The numbers poor and the, the, the attempts is really surprising. Just gets one a game. He doesn't get a lot of opportunity inside getting the basketball. He has to earn that right by working hard. But what he has done, he's rebounding the ball better. Their last game at Rhode Island, he had 10 rebounds. That's all John Cheney wants him to do is play the defense and get the boards. Took a peek at Jason Ivey, he's checked in. Sophomore forward out of Gadsden, Alabama. Batiste sits down, long to Van Teesling. Van Teesling has a good set of hands. Kareem Towns walks off it. Haywood, Burke, 
Towns outside, Newton at the high post. Faces, left-handed, in and out. And a foul on Jasper Van Tiesling over the back of Big William Cunningham. Van Tieslick showing an aggressive play, going over the top there. Had a big game against Evansville, his best game of his career, 16 points for Speedy Mars's LaSalle Explorers. McKee walks into the double team, then backs off. That's how they're coached, and it takes eight or nine seconds every trip, but that's plenty. And into the offense they go. Brunson. Jones and McKee overload the far side. Newton working with Ivy, and a foul will come on Derek Newton. No, Jason Ivy warding off with the left arm. Offensive foul. A better job by LaSalle, the freshman Newton working hard to front Jason Ivy. We've seen a few times down the court where Temple Al was wide open in the middle of the floor and capitalized with two points. Right there, the freshman does a good job getting over the top, being physical with Jason Ivy, and he'll get a seat next to Dean Milopoulos, the assistant coach of the Owls. As Batte comes back in. Unusual substitution pattern, kickball Eddie Jones. Turkwood Mott has come in. Accepts and shoots. Doesn't take long. Doesn't get a roll. Haywood. High over Cunningham. No. Rebound Brunson. He'll look to run side court right. Eddie Jones. And a late foul on Turk Mott, and three free throws coming, and Speedy can't believe it. Well, that drives a coach crazy because that's a tough shot deep in the quarter for Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones has released the shot. Turk when Mott can't stop, knocks him down, as you said, will go to the line for three free throws. Eddie Jones, the eagle. Now at 20 points per game, has three of them. You can have a lot of fun watching these two kids play, Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee. Both first round picks, but who's better? A lot of people talk, can Eddie Jones put the ball on the floor? Can he play the two guard spot? Can Aaron McKee go to the point guard? I mean, this is fun when scouts and general managers talk about it, so we can talk about it, we just don't get paid that big bucks. <laughs> well, their games are so different, but they complement each other so well. I wish they had a fourth year. Both Proposition 48 turnover, forced by Batie to Brunson. Behind the back, Jones! Great pass by Brunson to see Eddie Jones slashing down the middle, and that's what Eddie Jones does. He'll capitalize on that. Towns lays it off, Brunson the steal, out of bounds off Cunningham. And Temple with a 10-point lead at the Philadelphia Civic Center. You're watching Big Five Basketball on Sports Channel. While the healthcare debate continues, Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice. Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO and our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For over 55 years, the health plan you can lean on. Fall is here. And winter is coming. It's time to get to your Subaru dealer's silver anniversary celebration. Ask yourself, when was the last time your family drove here? Or here. Then ask yourself, why pay well over $20,000 for a sport utility? When you can buy selected legacy all-wheel drive wagons for thousands less. And that's before up to $3,000 in year in savings. Subaru, America's best-selling import wagon for 11 years straight. With our rugged winter weather on the way. And up to $3,000 in savings. You can't wait another minute. Subaru, it just makes sense. Eddie, the full court pressure may have surprised Paul Burke here. Good piece of coaching by John Cheney. Off the made three throws attempts by Jones, they go full court pressure. There, Petit makes a good play, the big guy to release the ball, and there's Jones finishing it off. Cheney doesn't like the full court pressure that much, and right there he does. He gets LaSalle napping, the excellent pass from Brunson, and that's an easy deuce for Eddie Jones. 
Eddie Jones and Temple have scored the last seven points to get a 10-point lead. LaSalle, three of 13. Van Teesling, ABC jump hook is way long. ABC Z. <laughs> Brunson to a strong left hand. And Batie high, Cunningham low against the Explorer zone. Jones. And Derek Newton back to the scores table. When you're playing that zone, you're really going to have to work hard to front three guys because they have the great spacing this tempo, and you have to run at the shooters. There's a shot. Wide open, Brunson. Real tough to zone the Temple Owls with three outside shooters like this. They interchange, they go inside the zone, someone pops out to the corner. 2-2-1 two, two, zone trap, broken, that's off a hand. Mott didn't know it, Burke to Towns. Kareem for three, short, gets his own. In the traffic, swatted. And that could be either on Batier or Cunningham. And William taking a lot from his teammates for leaving his feet. Right here, Kareem Towns gets a good look at the basket. Good play by Towns to see his shot coming short, go right back up, take it to Cunningham and right. William Cunningham supposed to stay down there, didn't have a real good angle as Kareem Towns will go to the line, the leading scorer for the LaSalle Explorers. Gets him at 25 plus a game among the top 10 in the nation, a 6'3 junior guard out of the alma mater of one Lionel Simmons, South Philadelphia High School. Mott, good keep alive to Towns. Hoper goes to Mott, up and under on Cunningham, and fouls coming, and William likely heading for the bench. Jason Ivey knows it. He sees the second on William, and he's up before the coaches look at him. Good play by the junior Paul Burke from Wincote, Pennsylvania, to make the entry pass inside. A better shot for Turquin Mott. Turquin Mott uses the basket to as one of his defenders and gets Cunningham off his feet again. And as you said, Cunningham will take a seat on the bench. Where he'll likely remain for the rest of the half. And that could be a possible Achilles heel for the Owls down the stretch. If you're an opposing coach with a real good inside game and you pound it in, they do lack that interior depth. Well, against a group like LaSalle who doesn't have a big man who's that an enforcer type inside, they can go with William Rice. So we saw some good minutes, William Rice against the Penn Quakers. One out of two, the lead's 11. The walk it up, breaking of pressure to McKee. Double low set. As Brunson goes through. McKee, good move to his left, the stop. Kicks it for Brunson, around Burke, 17 footer off balance, off target, off iron, it's Towns. He's one on three. Kareem usually likes those odds. Now goes for three. Derek Newton, good spring, and we'll stay here. Morris trying to work the official, but LaSalle, in order to stay with the Temple Owls, must shoot the ball from distance and have to get hot. Not shooting the ball well here in the first half at the Civic Center. Double team on Mott, gets it out to Burke. Fresh clock, Burke, teeth of the zone to Mott. Paul Burke finding his teammate Turpin Mott inside. The good penetration under control, the catch by Mott and the layup. And Ivy in the middle of the floor to help out. They don't need him. Sal stays in the half court trap and then goes back into his zone, just trying to take some time off that 35 second clock. And Temple will not force the issue. Shot clock at 10. Brunson in trouble, throws it away. John Cheney not going to like that as Brunson got carried away, dribbled way too far into the interior of the LaSalle defense. Towns? No, it's Mott who leaves for Towns. Temple's zone has to be extended because LaSalle, as we've seen already, will shoot from anywhere past that half-court strike. That's Quincy Lee who's come in, gives to Mott over Batie, who doesn't challenge, but is short. And Eddie Jones arrests the basketball with two arms wrapped around. Oh, LaSalle with 12 points in 11 minutes, and that's what Temple will do to you. They'll make you look ugly. Ugly. Brunson, hook pass McKee, gets it back. Drag the foot, Aaron instead, Brunson goes around Mott. 
Hesitation, no. Rebound, Ivy. Hands to Brunson. Left hand layup. Something Speedy Morris has had a problem all year long is rebounding the basketball. And right there, the guard sneaks in there. Brunson to follow it in and get his sixth point on the evening. And the lead is 11. Burke goes cross court to Quincy Lee, who fumbles. High post, Newton is fouled by Eddie Jones. Team foul number four on the outs. And so many teams that play Temple cannot get that ball inside that zone. You must get the ball inside Temple zone, have it collapse to get the outside jump shot, and that's what Speedy Morris and the Explorers are trying to do is get something inside and trying to get Burke and Towns for the outside jumper. Towns swatted away from behind by McKee. And we will get a break in the action. Well, the Temple Owls, a 23 to 12 point lead over Speedy Morris's club who are looking for some offense. Attention sports fans, when you need a score on any game, call Scores Coast to Coast, the fastest scores in Pennsylvania. You also get current weather and injury reports as well as trends on every game. And best of all, they're absolutely free. Here's your numbers in the Philadelphia area. Call 215-476-1400. In the Allentown area, call 215-820-4000. Quick, someone just scored. Call Scores Coast to Coast. Hello, my name is Greg Dawson, and I'm the Vice President of Aiding's Tour and Travel. We are a family-owned business, and our goal is to make you part of our family. Call Aiding's Tour and Travel at area code 215-637-4410. Here's John Cheney. He and Speedy Morris have combined to coach nearly 1,500 basketball games at the junior high, high school, Women's Collegiate, Division Two, and Division One levels. It's all the same game, I guess, huh? Well, John has also played in the Eastern Basketball League, semi-pro league in the, in the Philadelphia area. A legend on the basketball court also. John played a coach at Cheney State, Division Two program before he came on the Temple. Nine out of 10 years, taking him to the um, NCAA. Postseason. I mean, what can you say about the man? Win 75% of his games. And he is holding LaSalle right now at a 22% field goal percentage. They're four for 18. And we said that his defense will make you look bad out there. He's won nine games this year and he made some teams look embarrassing on the offensive end. Has lost two to Georgia Tech and West Virginia in Atlantic 10 game. I mean, that zone, if you're not prepared and ready, even if you are, you can maybe look bad. Good movement though off as the shot clock runs down, Burke throws it up. Mott over the shoulder. Unnecessary, the rebound of McKee. Brunson has Jones left side, takes it himself, 14 footer. And I don't think John Cheney's happy with that either as his point guard again, a little bit out of control, did not stop. Got lucky there with the deuce. Lead is 15. Quincy Lee, long. Towns out jumps Petit, comes up and under, wild shot, no result, Ivy the rebound. We saw two horse shots here so <laughs> by, far as Mott didn't look at the basket, nor did Kareem Towns. And Towns gets away with a foul there, and that's out of bounds off Eddie Jones. And... But John, real upset the way Rick Brunson is playing so far. Rick Brunson has eight points here in the first half with 652. But that doesn't matter because he's not making real good decisions in handling the basketball. He is going to handle it most of the time for the Temple Owls, and he wants them to make the right decisions. There's Brunson. Substitutions, Haywood and Van Teesling in. Lee and Mott out, still zoning up. And if you're going to play point guard for John Cheney, you better have some thick skin because you are going to have to play to perfection. That's the way the man wants the game played. Well, Ricky couldn't really take it his freshman year, but T, too easy over Newton. And Brunson left school, enrolled at Boston College, 
and changed his mind and came back into the fold before ever suiting up as an eagle. Didn't cost him any eligibility, and he says it didn't cost him John Cheney's respect either. No, John Cheney said you're going to have to do it my way. He came back, shook hands, and Brunson's even a better man for it today. Haywood flushes that one, drills it though. Cuts the lead to 12. 1 2 2. Token pressure. It's a 12 point advantage for Temple, but remember LaSalle shoots the threes, they can get back in it very quickly. And that's what John Cheney's concerned about. That Temple shooting close to 60% to build that lead. McKee looks over Romain Haywood. Van Teesling, good double on Eddie Jones. Ivy weak side. Ivy up. Ivy good and a foul. Well, excellent defense there by the LaSalle Explorers on the initial shot of Eddie Jones. Poor weak side rebounding by Romaine Haywood, the sophomore right there. That's a good double team right there. Haywood, 21, has to put a body on Ivy. The rebound a little long. Ivy's there, gets the shot, and also gets fouled, and he'll go the line for a three-point play. But right there, Haywood is too far underneath the basket. Must block the man out first, then go look for the basketball. And here's the Alabama High School Player of the Year two years ago, Jason Ivey. Jason came in at six for 25 from the free throw line. Makes that one. And the Owls have doubled him up. Burt fakes out everybody, including Van Teesling. Turnover. And Brunson slows it to a crawl. And I believe Speedy Mars is about to make a punitive substitution. Well, right. Paul Burke. Yeah, Burke had the shot, but Van Teesling, a freshman, not prepared to get, get that basketball. Batie out of control. Burke outlets Towns. Three on two. Towns in the middle. Haywood to his right. Towns alone. Nope. Derek Newton is fouled by Batie. And that's a difficult call to accept for Derek. Well, right there, Green Towns held the basketball. He was under control. I thought he would stop and shoot the jump shot before he got past the foul line, but stayed with an extra dribble. Had a wide open layup, but flicked it up instead of going up high into the air and trying to lay it in. There was not a temple out around to try to get the offensive foul. You saw Speedy Mars talking to his point guard, Paul Burke, not happy with his decision that last time, trying to throw it into the big center, Van Teasling. So Burke sits replaced by Steve Frommel, a 6'1 freshman guard out of Ridley High School in suburban Philadelphia. I would think Burke won't be on the bench that long. Tough spot for the freshman Steve Frommel to come in here against Temple's zone defense. Well, the way the game has really moved, the lead might be a lot stronger than 13, but Temple in command. Looking every bit like the 11th ranked team in the nation. Well, they control the tempo. Whoever they play against, I don't care if the team averages in 90, high 80s, they will control the game. Temple will want them to play the way they want you to play. Ivy, the give and the get. Brunson. Shot clock at five. Over the top, another bad choice. And John Cheney can't believe it. Frommel. Towns, as Speedy calls a box offense. Towns goes all the way through. Frommel looks at him. Haywood goes cross court to Towns, who has to run it down like Jerry Rice. And Frommel throws it away. Eddie Jones over the top. No, take the bounce. Well, what can you say? The defense creates the offense. The steal by Temple. Brunson makes the steal, He'll take it all the way down court. He waits for Eddie Jones, and there's a turnover without any defense. An unforced error on the LaSalle Explorers will be Temple basketball when we come right back. To win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5 Lump Sum Jackpot, just match five of 39 numbers. Any five numbers you're attached to. Cash 5, all the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once. In one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. 
It's Ford's Best Sellers Celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. With $1,200 package savings on America's most popular truck for 17 years straight, the Ford F-Series. Now with a driver's side airbag standard, plus air, stereo, automatic transmission, and a V8. Now that's affordable comfort. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the Best Sellers Celebration. Andy has said, tough spot for freshman Steve Frommel to step into. Well, Rick Brunson, the good steal here. He leads the Atlantic 10 in steals, ninth in the country. But how he sets up Eddie Jones, the perfect, the bounce pass, and then the dunk. Brunson can do it all, the steal and handling the ball. The excellent pass to get it on the floor to lead Eddie Jones. Coming up at halftime, a story of perseverance and following your dream. Former LaSalle standout guard Tim Legler now has a contract as a Dallas Maverick, even includes an option for the following year. Remember, Timmy, nice to see him in the NBA. Good visit with him by our producer, John Slobotkin, down in Dallas. And we'll bring you the Tim Legler story highlights, scores, and more. As you see, Temple now with six points off the turnovers. And Timmy Legler, a great outside shooter for the LaSalle Explorers, and right now they can use him against this matchup <laughs> zone defense. Extending out a little bit. How long can you sit zone down 15? Very difficult, but Speedy Mars really concerned about playing man-to-man. -man. It could get real ugly because LaSalle does not do a good job on the man-to-man -man defense. McKee is stripped by Haywood, who met him at the summit. Towns. No assist there. Van Teasling, his first two points, we said at 16 points against Evansville Saturday, the freshman at 6'10", man on the spot. We roll toward the three minute mark, a 13 point out lead. They overload the near side. Jones, a screen for Brunson, they break away. Brunson, double. Step out front of the shot clock to seven. Nikita Batie. For Brunson, hesitation three, no, Ivy. Well, what's happening is the shot from the side, the weak side rebounding right there. You can't fault the LaSalle Explorer Haywood this time because there was two Temple out there for him to block out, and Ivy gets the rebound. Ivy seems like a real talented natural rebounder. You see them from time to time. That's why another reason people like to play man-to-man -man against Temple because they know where they are and they can body them up. Against the zone, you're gonna have some problems matching up on rebounds. Newton has the rebound and he's fouled by Ivy. Team foul number six on Cheney's crew. And Jason Ivy knows that was not a wise foul, had no chance. We'll see William Rice get a few minutes here for John Cheney's Temple Owls. First Quincy Lee in Kareem Towns, who's had a very cold shooting first half. And sophomore William Rice out of Birmingham, Alabama comes in. Jason Ivey out. Now let's see how Rice plays, because I think he would play well against LaSalle. He's not real big inside of the Explorers, so he should be able to run and jump with them. It's only the fifth game he's gotten into. Haywood rattles it down. Romain Haywood with a six-point play to Atlantic City, New Jersey, where that Lewis Rowe from the University of Massachusetts also played his basketball. You love Lou Rowe. Oh, he is a man. Jones for three, front of the rim. I mean, he'll make that Rice who's fouled. And William makes his presence felt. Well, there's the quickness of William Rice going against the 6'10 guy, but he got his body inside and was just quicker to the basketball. You'll see the three-point opportunity by Jones. Rice will come down, go over Van Teasley, just quicker jumper to the ball, gets it, gets the opportunity to go to the three-throw line. For the very first time this year, William Rice. Still has no percentage. Always played 16 minutes. That's the first free throw the Owls have missed. They're six out of seven. Let's see if there's any full court pressure. Was Temple has shown it once off a made foul shot, but won't go in. And it's all Explorers on the defensive glass. Inside two minutes. A couple of good minutes here, and LaSalle could go in feeling pretty good about themselves, having been outplayed in the first half. Haywood to Burke for three. Short, Eddie Jones. Brunson is ahead of the pack. He'll lay it off. Oh, my goodness. And a foul on McKee. You'd never see that kind of decision made by a Temple point guard, and John Cheney wants to leave the building. 
He's not even. Oh, he's going to go to the other end of the bench. Did he call a foul on Ellis Alex Moore? Oh, they called that on Quincy Lee. I'd like to see that again, but maybe he did. But Brunson, there's something about being unselfish. If that's Eddie Jones, he wants to dunk. He goes in there. Wow, that's a tough call right there. I thought Aaron <laughs> had come over the back of Paul Burke. Only the sixth Cheney foul. Cheney doesn't care goes. about it because he's so mad at Brunson right now. It doesn't matter if he got the call. You see him at the very top of your screen. He's almost off the bench, is John. Jones for three. Around and out. Loose ball belongs to Quincy Lee. Van Teesling to Quincy Lee. Every pass at adventure. Newton on the box, double team to Lee. Van Teesling, six footer, air balls it. And Rice lets it go. Well, I mean, Van Teesling got it. He said, I'm open for a second. Just where's Cunningham? Where's Petit? Let me shoot it real fast. Not set yet to make the shot. Less than a minute remaining in the first half. And would you like to be the Temple locker room? <laughs> and hear what John Cheney says to his talented point guard. Petit takes it to Newton, is fouled by Newton. And Derek Petit, quite aggressive on the offensive side. That is two personals on Derek Newton. Turnwood Mott comes in, Jasper Van Teesling will come out. Petit makes the first. And Dean Demopoulos has to go all the way to the end of the bench to get a word with Coach John Chaney who says, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> He's a nice I don't care. Do whatever you want. You guys are in charge. So Demopoulos, and well, he went down and said, do you mind if I give a minute of playing time to Julian King? And Chaney said, I don't care. <laughs> so with 38 seconds left, there's a nine second differential. Cross court, Quincy Lee, line drives it three, well off target. Mott has a floorboard, throws it away, and runs it on the end line. And Julian King will make just his second appearance of the 93-94 season. He'll replace Eddie Jones for the final 27 seconds. Been kind of sloppy. The Owls have not played particularly well, but they have a 13-point lead, and Speedy Morris says, let's hold for one. Calls for a 1-4. It's a high 1-4. Haywood goes through. Lee goes through. Haywood is open for three. Way off. Derek Newton with two. One out of count, Derek Newton. And we come to the end of half number one. A relatively unattractive first half of play. The Temple Owls and John Cheney head to the locker room with an 11 point lead. And there will be some ears singed in the locker room of the 11th, round, 11th ranked Temple Owls. Here's Derek Newton working off the offensive glass to get his club one final basket in the first half with the left hand over Batie. And that's probably about the best moment of the first half. Speedy Morris now in conversation with Ed Stefanski. Gentlemen. Speedy, tough getting shots against Cheney's defense, but you are getting opportunities, just not making them very well. Yeah, we're not, we're not running with uh, any confidence at all, Eddie. We're not, we're not moving the basketball. We're hustling him. We're not running our stuff. I mean, we'll get shots if we just run what we're supposed to run. And what are we making them? That's a different story. Uh, we've got a couple guys on playing with confidence right now. And, you know, we got to change it around. If we're, if we're to go, going to be a team like this, we got to play 100 times better second half. Stay in the zone as long as you can? Well, yeah, you know, they, they kind of help you, you know, by holding the ball, but they they run it down to five seconds and make it. I mean, it's just a, they're a terrific team with a, you know, well coached. They're just a great, great coach team. Good luck, Speedy. Speedy Morris has to go back in there and see what he can do, and John Cheney probably has an earful right now for Rick Brunson, Larry Rosen. Indeed he does, Ed Stefanski. We've got a special visit with Tim Legler, former LaSalle Explorer, great now in the NBA. We'll come back with that. Stay tuned. It's coming up next. 
Where can uninsured children get health care coverage? The Caring Foundation. Created three years ago by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield, the foundation provides free health care coverage for uninsured children. Now, as part of the state-funded CHIP of Pennsylvania program, the Caring Foundation can do more. Call 1-800-464-KIDS. The Caring Foundation. The answer for uninsured children. Pennsylvania Yellow Pages from Ballot Landing. Another year ends and a new one begins, but the new prism rolls on with great movies like Forever Young with Mel Gibson, Malcolm X with Denzel Washington, and Summersby with Richard Gere and Jodie Foster. The most flyers and Sixers games on TV. Great music programs like SRO and Live from Raptors. And exclusive special features like The Great Sports Debate and Prism Kids. Call your cable company and order the new Prism today. Well, the Temple Owls defense has held high-scoring Kareem Towns to just four points in the first half. One of the people playing without confidence, as Speedy Morris indicated, his club down by 11 to the 11th-ranked Temple Owls here at halftime. I'm Larry Rose, and Eddie and I will be back with half number two. But first, we'd like to share with you a story of perseverance. A young man not heavily recruited out of Richmond, Virginia, who came to LaSalle and made a name for himself, has finally cracked in to the NBA. His name is Tim Legler. Here's his story from Dallas. If you are ever at a loss to define perseverance, look no further than former LaSalle, now Dallas Mavericks guard Tim Legler. Told more times than he can count that he just wasn't good enough for the NBA, Legler refused to heed those negative words. Now he has at last been rewarded with a contract, with playing time, with hope for the future. In many ways, it's always been this way for Legler, even as a schoolboy in Richmond, Virginia. The recruiters did not pound down the door. In fact, he decided to try LaSalle University before they decided to try Tim Legler. We got a call from his dad. His dad said, hey, you know, my son's a pretty good player. Uh, he's a 6'4 shooting guard. Um, wants to go to a small Catholic school in the Northeast Carter. So that helps. That helps. Now we go down and we evaluate him. And to be honest with you, not 100% sure. Not 100% sure. You always ask yourself, well, I mean, why isn't UVA recruiting him? Why isn't Richmond recruiting him? Why isn't VCU recruiting him? You know, why aren't those Virginia schools recruiting him? How, how come he's being recruited so little? You, know, you get down, you, you see some things you like, and uh, you know, what is really difficult to evaluate? You think you can evaluate. What's really difficult to evaluate is how bad a guy wants it. And he wanted it. Wanted it badly enough to make Mahalik look like a genius, earning first team all Big Five honors, all MAC conference, taking his team along with a young Lionel Simmons to the championship game of the NIT as a junior to the NCAAs as a senior. He bridged a memorable era at LaSalle, entering with Lewis, Black, and Coach Lefty Irvin, going to the big dance with Lionel, Doug Overton, and Coach Speedy Morris. Well, it was, a, it was a fun time when I played at LaSalle. I got to play with some great players. As it turns out, I played with you know, three guys that are in the NBA right now and another guy, you know, Ralph Lewis, who played in the NBA for a couple years, and I played with him my freshman year. So. You know, it, was, it was a fun time during, during that period, and there's no question, you know, Lefty and Speedy are two, two distinctly different coaches, so I got to experience, you know, what it's like to play for both of those guys, and I think in the long run it helped me as a player, you know, getting a taste of each of them. But it was with Morris that the national spotlight was ablaze. An undefeated conference season, a taste of the top 20, and promise fulfilled. And I think that was really the start that season, or actually, I should say my junior year, the NIT run that we made, losing in the finals, that brought us close together and set up kind of my senior year in which we went to the NCAAs, and I think we were 23-7, and seven, had a real good season, and that kind of started the transition for LaSalle basketball, I think the resurgence of it, and because uh, they, they went to the NCAAs for several years after that, and I think it kind of put LaSalle back on the basketball map, so to speak. But while LaSalle was back on the map, Legler appeared to be on a road to nowhere. An undrafted free agent, he wandered through the fringes of professional basketball, from Rochester to Omaha of the Continental Basketball League. 
a small but needed paycheck back in Philadelphia in the USBL, signed and quickly waived by Phoenix, then also by Minnesota, and by Washington and Utah. His five-year mission had led to less than 30 NBA appearances through March of last year. And yes, he did think about stepping off and giving up the fight. Uh, there was really only one time I thought that, and that was back, I think, in 90 when I was cut by the Timberwolves uh, because it was about, about a good of four weeks of basketball as I could have played, I felt, and I, I really felt I earned a spot on that team, not only on the team, but I thought in the top seven or eight in the rotation. Uh, and to be cut by that team, that, that hurt. And I thought, I'm just never going to get a shot for whatever reason. You know, I didn't know if I didn't play at a big enough program or what the problem was, but I actually did. I thought about it for quite a while, but I talked to my CBA coach. He talked me to come back and play, and I went there, seemed like with a renewed like a renewed determination that year and as it turns out uh, that's the year that everything started happening for me as far as the NBA was concerned so um, like I said I have no regrets in my career and I'm just glad now I'm finally in the NBA and, and uh, hopefully here for a long time. After living on 10 day contracts a season is a long time for Legler. Legler now has that plus an option year with the Mavericks and yes they are woeful but to Legler they have meant an opportunity. And with that opportunity, at last has come security that he is indeed an NBA player. Few have traversed such a difficult road. Few have gone so far with so little backing. But that's just part of the story. My hunger to, to play at the top level in the world is, is really the reason that I'm here. Um, my determination, because I was told by practically everyone coming along the way, except for my family and close friends, that I was wasting my time. You know, why, why are you doing this? You know, you, you know, especially when I got cut a few times. But the more I was told that, the more I, you know, I realized they, you know, those people didn't really understand me as a person and, and how driven I was, um, because I think I'm pretty much a perfectionist. You know, I'm driven by success, and uh, that's been the way I've approached everything in my life. And this was no different. So uh, I, I knew one day I would get here and, and be here to stay. And uh, so it looks back. I can look back and uh, to all those people that told me that, and I could a smile on my face. While the health care debate continues, Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice, Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO, and our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For over 55 years, the health plan you can lean on. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. It's Ford's best seller celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer with big savings on the number one selling small car, Ford Escort. Now with a standard driver's side airbag and still priced thousands less than the competition. Or get big savings on Ranger, again the number one selling compact pickup. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the best seller celebration. Jimmy Connors is back, but he'll have to battle number one Pete Sampras, Jim Courier, Yvonne Wendell, and Michael Chang. It's the hottest tennis in town. The Comcast U.S. Indoor, February 14th through the 20th at the Spectrum. Call 1-800-995-BALL. 1-800-995-BALL. An unattractive first half is in the books. The Temple Owls ranked 11th in the nation in the locker room with a 35-24 lead here at halftime. Game two of our women's men's doubleheader. Game one, Villanova won their 16th consecutive for Harry Peretta over the University of Pennsylvania 69-59. to And coming up next, we'll come back with first half highlights. Andy will have analysis, that and much more coming up in just a moment. To win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5 Lump Sum Jackpot, just match five of 39 numbers. Any five numbers you're attached to. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once. In one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. If you think you play like this, but you really play like this, you need help. You need Leslie Nielsen, 
star of the new home video, Bad Golf, made easier. Billy, the reason the game is called golf is because all the other four-letter words have been taken. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier teaches you the fundamentals. Always remember the only really useful tip in golf is the one you get to the starter. Secrets the pros won't tell. Never use the comb in the blue fluid. And how to play the problem lie. It's the smash hit home video. Call now to order. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. What is our credo? We don't play golf to feel bad. We, we play, play bad, bad golf, golf but to feel, feel good. good. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. Only $19.98. This video makes the perfect gift. Rush delivery available. Call 1-800-624-9889. Hey, this is Mel Toxic from 1039 WDRE, Philly's Modern Rock, inviting you to join me 8 o'clock Monday night, January 24th, for a special evening at Rafters Cabaret in Westchester. The prism cameras will be rolling as local rockers Martin's Dam takes the stage for the next edition of Live from Rafters. It'll be a great evening of music and television madness, courtesy of Prism and WDRE. So check out the Live from Rafters experience, 8 o'clock Monday night, January 24th, at Rafters Cabaret in Westchester. Well, the Temple Owls shot 50% of the first half in building themselves a double-digit lead. Good contributions up and down the lineup. They lead Sweet Sweetie Morris's LaSalle Explorers by 11 here at halftime. Larry Rosen and Ed Stefanski with you live at the Philadelphia Civic Center. All right, you got Kareem Towns one for nine. You got Paul Burke one for five. You're playing one of the best defensive teams in America. Where do you go, coach? Well, as Speedy said, I think they just have to keep shooting the ball from the outside, hope they get hot. In the zone, he has to say the zone defense because, believe me, they cannot play man-to-man. -man. And when you have to play against Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee, you just have to hang on. Got to get hot from the outside and make some jump shots. Since they've missed the jump shots, the offensive rebounds have been available. They have 13 offensive rebounds, 18 second chance points. Not something you expect out of LaSalle, but it's keeping them somewhat in contention tonight. It's keeping them in the game, but then on the other end, they just can't stop Temple. And they're giving them very good shot opportunities. Plus, Brunson has not played well as a point guard for Temple. It could be worse here. He has made some very poor decisions, and they still have a big halftime lead. All right, Eddie, we'll go back and check out some of the key moments from our first half of action. Seen exclusively here on Sports Channel, Jason Ivey, who popped off the bench with five points and three boards. This is what Eddie was talking about. Second chance opportunity, the putback and the basket. Meanwhile, this is one of the brighter moments for Ricky Brunson. The good anticipation, the steal on the Frommel pass. And the good bounce pass. Could have gone alley-oop, went the safe route. Jones, the two-handed slam. And great balance in the scoring. Jones, nine. Brunson, seven. McKee, five, five for Ivy. Four points for big William Cunningham. Hard to find LaSalle highlights here, though. A good pass. Paul Burke finds Turk Mott. And Mott takes it strong to the front of the rim, goes off the glass for his only field goal of the first half and as the half wound down the three for Romain Haywood again the long rebound off a hand of Derek Newton who drops in the short jumper scoring looks this way Haywood with six Newton with six Towns with four Burke with three Mott with three the statistics that shooting percentage for LaSalle is not an aberration that's the actual eight for 33 24%, but as you see, LaSalle has hung in on the glass. Temple at 50, 50%, nine second chance points to 18 for LaSalle. We'll come back with the second half of tonight's Sports Channel exclusive in just a moment. Hey, this is John Gurevich inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. It's the Sixers monthly television magazine. As John Slobotkin, Tony Irving, and I take you inside the personalities and stories that develop as the NBA season unfolds. There's a new show about the middle of every month, right through to a postseason edition in May. Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider, here on Sports Channel. Box office favorites, blockbuster hits, acclaimed performances. It's a new year of great movies on Prism. In 1994, you'll see Mel Gibson in Forever Young. 
Miranda Richardson in Enchanted April, Denzel Washington in Malcolm X, Tom Barringer in the action-packed Sniper, Jean-Claude Van Damme in Nowhere to Run, and Richard Gere and Jodie Foster in Summersby. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Well, that's Stefanski. The first element to an upset is believing you can do it. I guess LaSalle's looking for a reason to believe right now. Well, their offensive shots have been there. They're not taking their time. They're not shooting the ball with confidence. They got to stick it right in. Not be afraid that Temple's going to block their shot. Newton, the penetration with authority. Offensive foul as he wards off with the right arm. And so nine seconds in, the first mistake is called. Well, the freshman Derek Newton tried to make something happen. Right there, he, freshman mistake by pushing off, but at least he made an aggressive move to the hall. Some pressure again, as Eddie said, this is to try to use the clock. Double team more aggressive on McKee, finds Batie who comes out, and it's Brunson. Speedy hopes that they set up their offense a little late, so they'll have to rush the shot at the end of that 35 second clock. Shot clock's at 10 as McKee looks over Van Tiesling to Brunson. Back to Aaron, who's open for three. Air balls it, Jones. Very big shot by Aaron McKee. Way off the left-hand side, but Eddie Jones right there to lay it back in. He's got 11. Aaron McKee only with five points on the evening. Only four shots in the half. Temple matching up. LaSalle, a little bit of standing around. Now they get some motion going. Haywood on the baseline. Temp McKee cuts it off. Temple really bringing the zone way out. Haywood deep in the corner. Big shot. Haywood does get that shot from the corner. Has nine points, all three pointers from the outside. He's three for six. McKee backs away and crosses to Jones. Jones at the top. You see the way the out guards like to spread out. They overload the near side. Runs in, loads and fires. Rims out, Van Tiesling, good rebound, good box out. Yeah, Van Tiesling doing a nice job on Dirk Petit. Put a little bit of that backside in him, got him off the, and got the nice hard rebound. Again, LaSalle's got to get Towns involved. Newton, high low, Van Tiesling throws it away. McKee's got it, turnover number six on the Explorers. Now it's a far side overload on his own offense. Batie, 15 footer Batie, that's the shot that they give up all night as Eddie said, and Burke's got a floorboard. A couple three pointers by the salad make this game very interesting. Turk went on at the scorer's table. Towns just one for nine. 25-footer. <laughs> From downtown, as you said, one from nine. It doesn't matter. He's a shooter. He gets his seventh point on the evening. And from NBA range, gets the crowd slightly involved. Well, I'll tell you, they use that 10-second clock in the backcourt. Temple gets it over nine seconds, nine and a half, almost every time. Shot clock already at 10, so it kind of changes the offensive flow, and that's what Morris wanted to do. Shot clock at three. Blunt's in the shake, the spin, the pass to the tee for three. And Haywood's got a board, and here comes the south. That's not the shot they wanted. Towns throws it away. Brunson has McKee. McKee around Van Tiesling, up and under. Oh, nice. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is a great move by Aaron McKee. But Van Tiesling has to put a foot on the baseline right there. He had an excellent opportunity to draw the offensive foul. You let Aaron McKee slip through there, you're in big trouble. Double team on Towns, who throws it away. Towns is having killing him right and there now. There goes the jacket, and Speedy is apoplectic to McKee. Bad pass behind Jones, who saves for Brunson. Two point shot. Tap Petit, rebound Petit, and a foul. Good work, Derek Petit. Well, the last two possessions down the floor, 
Kareem Towns has just killed LaSalle by making poor passing decisions right there. Temple comes down and capitalizes because Derek Petit will not be denied on the offensive glass. Strong gathers his legs in, goes up strong, and gets a three-point opportunity. Clearly a conscious effort on John Chaney's part to get Petit involved in the offense in the first half. Now has eight points. So LaSalle had a chance to cut the lead to single digits. They're down by 12 early in the second half. Oh, man. Look what you did. Uh, what I did? Uh, just who do you think you are, man? Who do you think I think I am? Easy, fellas. What would he do? All the yellow pages? Just any yellow pages? Genuine yellow pages. Nine out of ten uses. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania yellow pages from Bell Atlantic. Flyers, the Sixers, the Big Five. The best home team sports lineup on TV this January on Prism. The Flyers skate in six games, including matchups against Wayne Gretzky's Kings and Brett Hull's Blues. The Sixers hit the hardwood nine times in a lineup featuring Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic and Patrick Ewing and the Knicks. And the Big Five rumbles at the Spectrum with a LaSalle Penn St. Joe's Temple doubleheader. Home team games you won't see anywhere else on TV this January on Prism. Don't miss any of the action. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Well, Eddie, with the extended defense on the perimeter, this is where Towns has to go to find a shot. Towns going far from the three-point arc. Nails it here at the Civic Center, gets the three points for Speedy, but has done a bad job handling the ball the last two possessions. There's where Van Teasley just does not get the baseline. Let's McKee get inside that zone defense. He knifes his way through the back of the basket and uses it. There's Kareem Towns walking off the floor in the court, and I'm sure he heard it from Speedy Morris at that time out. This out two of 10 here, 29% for the game. Now here's where Towns can't hang his head. He just heard it from the coach. Speedy will get it in your face, but Speedy will also tell you when you make the good play. He has to come back down the court, make good decision, and if he has the jumper, fire away. And at least in the second half, John Chaney is back in his more traditional location between Dean Demopoulos and Jim Maloney. Burke, who's been quiet on the offensive end, is double teamed and in trouble. Haywood on the baseline. Towns has to run it down. You better fake the ball. You gotta let Temple commit themselves because they got those long arms, those McKee and Jones. Haywood, no, Van Teesling weak side. Towns for three, falling away, not even close. Van Teesling, good hustle. There's the fake you wanted. Haywood, Turkwood Mott. Excellent board work from all the, uh, the LaSalle explorers inside as Mott gets his fifth point. But controlling Temple in that possession, very difficult to do with the D and William Cunningham in there. Still a 10 point ball game. Five minutes into the second half. And Temple very content at this walk it up pace. And LaSalle sitting back in their zone. Brunson to McKee. Good ball fake baseline. The runner on Van Teesting. Late whistle. The foul on Jasper. Again, the baseline. You learn that when you play in the video league against Rich Prendergast, the assistant coach of LaSalle, who coached CYO basketball, saying, get your foot on the baseline right there. He goes by the LaSalle Explorer. Van Teesling has to come and try to help Haywood and gets the foul. Aaron to the free throw line where he leads the Atlantic 10 in foul shooting percentage. That's his first tonight, has eight points in the ball game. Quietly efficient is Mr. McKee. Well, Aaron McKee must like to play against Speedy Mars and the LaSalle Explorers. He averages 22 points, eight rebounds, and only shoots 51% from the field when he faces the Explorers. The lead's 11. The defense is extended, Burke. Good pass, Haywood. Rims out, Petit, strong side rebound. You're playing Temple, you gotta call out who's got Jones, who's got Brunton, and who's got McKee. They'll kill you from the outside. Petit throws it away. Towns will take it to Jones, crosses over, and brings it out. 
Turklin Mott gets his feet together, short, McKee the rebound. I mean, a wide open shot, a good shot, just didn't have a chance, didn't never got over the front of the rim. Thought about it. And the guard swing. Entry Petit over his back is Haywood. And in terms of a number of entry passes, that's likely the most touches Derek Petit's had this season. Well, Derek Petit did a good job, and he pointed his finger over to Aaron McKee to say, thank you, good pass, because Petit did an excellent job shielding off and putting the LaSalle Explorer on his back, that Romain Haywood, and got the nice entry pass, worked hard, and got rewarded. As he does here, accepting. And now flashes to the post does Petit. Where's Eddie Jones? There he is in the corner, to his left. No, good rebound, Haywood around Cunningham. Turklin Mott doesn't even think about the shot. Towns can step up. Kareem Towns. The sound playing real hard, even though they're down. They played hard, cross-court pass. The Temple zone could not adjust, and they've cut the lead to eight with 13-11. Kind of quiet in here tonight. The atmosphere matches the play, and Burke nearly a steal. McKee all the way, left-handed Aaron McKee. Again, they almost had the steal to the Explorers, but Aaron McKee right there getting hot in the second half. Ten points, knifes his way through the whole LaSalle defense. Silent assassin is McKee. Jones, the flashier player, nearly a steal. Haywood, same spot. Short, Van Tiesling. Hey, Van Teesling's coming of age. Jasper Van Teesling only has four points, but the freshman from the Netherlands is playing against some tough competition in the Temple Owls. The lead is eight. Jones straight away. Short, Cunningham is fouled. Thought he should have had the finish, but we'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, William Cunningham upset. He says, my fault, did a good job inside rebounding the basketball, puts the big body at 6'10 in there. Strong left-hand rebound, but he's got to finish it off with lightly off the glass, a nice touch in there. Holds his head because he knows he should be going the line just for one shot, not two. And that's where he got whacked by Turk Mott. William had double-digit rebounds and a real nice performance against Rhode Island. How about St. Joe's win over GW last night? What an effort. Excellent win as Yinka Dore and the George Washington Colonials came to Hawk Hill, but the Hawks played real hard as St. Joe posted their first Atlantic 10 victory in the season. Your boy Carlin Worley took it straight at Yinka. William misses, and it's on the floor to Towns. All right, down eight with the basketball. Here comes LaSalle. Nearly a steal by Jones. See, right there, Haywood has to fake the basketball, make Jones commit himself, and then make a bounce pass or go away from him. You don't fake the ball, Eddie Jones is going to kill you. Burke to his right for three. In front of the iron, and Haywood runs it down. The Owls have kind of lost interest a little bit. Burke for three again. In and out. And Eddie Jones alone the tap to Cunningham. Straight away, just didn't get the roll here at the Civic Center. Now Brunson goes over and he's gonna get a timeout. John Chaney has seen enough. Yeah, John doesn't like the equilibrium on the floor as his club's kind of in a standstill mode. We'll take a break at the Civic Center as Temple has an eight point lead. You're watching Big Five Basketball on Sports Channel. While the healthcare debate continues, Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice. Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO. And our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. 
for over 55 years the health plan you can lean on. Fall is here. And winter is coming. It's time to get to your Subaru dealer's silver anniversary celebration. Ask yourself, when was the last time your family drove here? Or here. Then ask yourself, why pay well over $20,000 for a sport utility? When you can buy selected legacy all-wheel drive wagons for thousands less. And that's before up to $3,000 in year in savings. Subaru, America's best-selling import wagon for 11 years straight. With our rugged winter weather on the way. And up to $3,000 in savings. You can't wait another minute. Subaru, it just makes sense. Here, Eddie Aaron McKee uses the stiletto, the assassin. Almost a steal by LaSalle, but picks it up as Aaron McKee goes all the way in. Let's see if Turquin Mott should try to step in right here. Everybody's late defensively. Turquin Mott's got to show himself earlier. You can't let a player go from the top of the court there all the way in and lay it in. We'll be back at you on Prism Tuesday for a terrific doubleheader. St. Joe's and Temple in a Big Five at Atlantic 10 War. Followed by LaSalle at Pennsylvania Tuesday, January 25th, beginning at 7 o'clock, exclusively on Prism. And we're underway with the 11.38. Brunson needs some help and has Jones. Shot clock already at 15. Well, Speedy has gotten the one thing he wanted there. He had to shoot quickly. Jones turns around, no, gets his own straight up. Around and out. McKee on the floor and will stay. As Aaron pounds his fist, it goes off Paul Burke. Speedy's on the court almost. He's going to go out and block out one of the Temple Owls soon right now. Very frustrated that they get three opportunities to Temple. Now they get the ball underneath their own basket. Temple's too good to give him this many opportunities. Rick Brunson goes all the way back to midcourt and accepts. Well, Sal's been able to stay in contact and stay in their zone. Entry pass. Cunningham is pushed from behind by Turkwood Mott. And there's no need for that. When William Cunningham is 10 feet from the basket, he turns and faces. He's not going to shoot the basketball. He's way too far. He's not on the block. Not a good foul by Turquin Mott. Second half foul, six on LaSalle, zero on Temple. Again, Brunson heads back toward the other end of the building. I see other teams doing that now. John Cheney showed that you'll get the ball in bounds. You may not get a score off of it because it's going away in the backboard, but you won't get the turnover either. Safety first. Jones to Batie. Lay it up and good. High, low, perfect. Excellent, that's the way you diagram it. Eddie Jones, an unselfish player, gives Derek Petit his 10th point on the evening, getting some inside help. Joining Petit and Jones and McKee all in double figures. Near throwaway, Burke is fouled in the corner. That should be on Petit. It is. First team foul on Temple. Eddie Jones with five assists tonight. They see Kareem Towns doing the Brunson. What I tell you? Say? They're complimenting John Cheney. That is correct. They don't put people on the line for offensive rebounds. Haywood rims out, and Jones has it. See that around the nation a lot, too. Sal has had some opportunities, but they only get one shot, and they're done right now. The key double team. Jones finds Brunson. The step up three. Uh huh. Now the possessions for Temple, they're running on all cylinders. They're getting inside the, temp the LaSalle defense with the entry pass, knocked it back out. They're getting the jump shot wide open. Brunson, the fourth Allen double figures. Thrown away by Burke, restolen by Towns, corralled by McKee. Bounce to Brunson. Good floor presence, Rick Brunson. Brunson. Cheney asks for some motion. Eddie comes to the high post, gets it. Back to Brunson. To Petit, lay it up and good. Derek Petit now with an even dozen. You know, that was a nice pass by Brunson, but even a better catch by Petit. A tough pass, a good catch, and a put it on the glass. And Speedy Morris senses it's getting away from him. He's going to take a timeout down by 15. 
Attention sports fans, when you need a score on any game, call Scores Coast to Coast, the fastest scores in Pennsylvania. You also get current weather and injury reports, as well as trends on every game. And best of all, they're absolutely free. Here's your numbers in the Philadelphia area. Call 215-476-1400. In the Allentown area, call 215-820-4000. Quick, someone just scored. Call Scores Coast to Coast. Hello, my name is Greg Dawson, and I'm the Vice President of Aiding's Tour and Travel. We are a family-owned business, and our goal is to make you part of our family. Call Aiding's Tour and Travel at area code 215-637-4410. And he talked about a high-low offense against a, a zone defense. Here comes Jones. Well, the middle wide open. LaSalle has to respect the outside shooting. They get the ball inside to Eddie Jones. The unselfish play as Derek Petit shows himself with the catch and inside. Now you'll see Brunson making the drive, unselfish play by him. Again, the good catch without walking, shuffling the pivot foot, and he uses the glass for a deuce. Temple now playing very well on the offensive end, and look at the run, 7-0 in the last 5-51. LaSalle had it with an eight. By the way, that man, Derek Petit, has 12 tonight. His season high 14 against Cincinnati, his career high 19 against Wake Forest last February. And Speedy's still looking for answers. Towns on the baseline. Is cut up by Jason Ivey, who's just come in. Cross court, Burke, 30 feet away. Towns over a Mott screen. Good out of bounds play by LaSalle on the timeout. Speedy Mars with the screen for Towns to try to get back in this ball game. And when do they abandon zone defense? Well, Temple's not going to rush the shot. You go man to man to hold the ball too. Plenty of time, 840. Again, Eddie Jones at the high post. Steps off to the wing. Shot clock at five. McKee back to Brunson. Has to force it. And Batie climbs the back of Romaine Haywood. Team foul number two on the Owls. Well, Haywood learning because Petit has gotten some rebounds off the weak side a few times. Right there, Haywood put a nice body check on Petit and get the call from the official. Haywood to Burke. Towns for three. Turkman Mott offensive glass and the foul. Same play down the floor to try to get Kareem Towns the outside shot. This time off, but Turkwin Mott, the sophomore from Philadelphia, on the spot with the long rebound. There's your shot. It's going to come long. Turkwin Mott has done a good job shielding off McKee. Petit gets him on the arm, and he gets the deuce. So Turk for the bottom end to cut the lead to nine. And does. And pressure after the made free throw. 2-2-1, two, two, loosely. LaSalle's either hanging around or Temple's letting them hang around. One of the two. Or a little of both. Again, nine seconds to get across the timeline. Eddie Jones stripped. Comes up with a loose ball. As the baseline was available, Brunson to Ivy, blocked by Haywood, met him at the top. And that gets the crowd engaged. Towns for three. They just can't capitalize LaSalle. When they get it down, they're not knocking down that three, which they need to do to try to beat and upset the 11th ranked Dallas. We approach the seven minute mark. Seems like it's been between a 9 and a 12 point game almost from the opening tip. There's no doubt LaSalle has to get lucky from the outside to try to beat Temple. They just can't knock down that 3. Only down 9. And Eddie Jones a ball screen. He's at the high post area. Steps to the wing. Stripped by Mott. Off Jones. Yep, it is. <laughs> 
Speedy into it. Cheney beginning to rise to the occasion as well. Up nine. Here come the Explorers. Brunson goes for the strip defense. Nothing happens. Gibson gets with Mott Towns. Entry pass Van Teesling, left hand, no. Petit back in the hands of Van Teesling. Kicks it to Burt, big three. And now you have the Civic Center crowd into it. A home game for LaSalle. They've cut it down to six with Paul Burke in plenty of time. Burke, so silent offensively, hits the biggest shot of the night so far and knocks it out of bounds. It's a veteran Temple club, not likely to rattle. You can say that again. There's Ice Water, Nose Veins, McKee, Jones, and Brunson. They will not rattle. But they had chances to put the sal away and did not. Six minutes remaining. And credit LaSalle for good perimeter defense. Jones to the air. No. Derek Petit ties the season high with 14. Again, Derek Petit doing a good job on the weak side against Mott and against Haywood. Just bigger and stronger and pushing him off to get that offensive rebound. Derek Rainbows. It's a five-point game. This is what Big Five action, inner city rivalry in Philadelphia is all about. Throw out the records. That's a 10-second count, finally. They flirted with that danger all night long. And Speedy's been trying to get that call all night long. As John Cheney looks on and says, 10 seconds, let's get the ball across. Wow, this game has been all John Cheney and the Temple Owls, but LaSalle has made a run down five with 523. As you see the turnovers, LaSalle averages 13 a game. They have nine. Temple averages nine. They have seven. Speedy having a word with the officials. Calls for a low snap, a low stack with a pop out. Big possession. Haywood in the corner. Haywood in the corner. Dribble drive. Offensive rebound, Turkman Mott, stolen by Brunson. With Towns, fouled and bodied by Towns early on. He's not calling an attention foul, I hope. No, I don't think so. That'll be one and one, though, for Brunson. Well, Haywood had the baseline, tried to get it down, but look at LaSalle, they stay hard on it. Mott can't just get the ball into his hands. Brunson, who leads. The Atlantic tenant steals, comes up with it. There's a good foul because Brunson was going to go all the way. Looked like he was going to pull down his uniform drawers to stop him. Here's Brunson, good free throw shooter. All the Temple Owls go off the line as Rick Brunson, no Aaron McKee wants to get in there. Brunson has 11 points on the evening, shoots it at 72% clip from the line. Two out of two. The lead is seven. And some pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure, but T alone on the back line. Good move by John Cheney to show a different look. Cross court, Haywood. Haywood, short. Ivy, the floorboard is fouled by Turk Mott. And that may have been a high water mark for the Sal at 54-49. Real bad decision there by Romain Haywood. I mean, he wants to do the best for his team, and he's playing hard, and he realized, but just a real quick shot there against Temple. And Temple was running around. They had him spread around the court. Temple running at shooters right there, maybe a little quick by Haywood. I remember Jason Ivey, a 25% free throw shooter. One for one of the line tonight. Off Iron Towns the rebound. Well, they're still alive. 4-4-4, four, 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 you see we count it down. Pac 
attacking in that zone, and they pop out on town. Burt, little penetration. Skip pass, Kareem stands back. And over it goes. Greentown's having problems. Again, that matchup of John Chaney and Temple will make you look bad. They can take someone out of the game if they want to. A lot of times it's the big guy of the opposing team. Today it's going to be Kareem Towns, and they're doing it. Ivy to Brunson. They'll set it up. The team flashes in front of Antista. Doesn't get a look. Aaron McKee around Mott over Van Tiesling. Short. The fight belongs to McKee to Batie. At 16 for Derek Batie. Another loose ball on the ground. Temple gets it. LaSalle's got to make a shot here. Towns has all day. Towns has his own. Out of bounds to LaSalle. They're going to give possession, I believe, to the Temple Owls. But first, we'll take a timeout. Maybe Temple has survived the onslaught. Back with the final chapter in a moment. To win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5 Lump Sum Jackpot, just match five of 39 numbers. Any five numbers you're attached to. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once. In one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash 5. All the cash all at once. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. It's Ford's best seller celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. With $1,200 package savings on America's most popular truck for 17 years straight, the Ford F-Series. Now with a driver's side airbag standard, plus air, stereo, automatic transmission, and a V8. Now that's affordable comfort. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the best seller celebration. Well, here's good court awareness by Aaron McKee to find his teammate after running down his own shot, Eddie. Well, Van, Van Teasley does a good job making the shot, trying to block it, but he has to block out Aaron McKee. Aaron McKee almost stepping out of bounds, but gets the loose ball right to his teammate, Derek Petit. And Derek Petit has been the recipient of a lot of shots with 16 points. Temple 9-0 when leading with five minutes remaining. And the reason is they have three of the best guards in the country, Eddie Jones, Aaron McKee, and Rick Brunson, and that man you don't turn the ball over when you play for John Cheney. They only average nine turnovers a game. Looks like LaSalle will inbound it as there's a bit of confusion. Eddie Jones says it's our ball. The right call is LaSalle ball. But a little bit of confusion. You gotta get a bucket. Down nine with 339. They need a bucket right here. LaSalle shooting 29% for the game. Haywood backs down McKee, short, and off the hands of Turkman Mott, no, off Rick Brunson. Another chance coming. Let's see, is Temple in a straight man to man now, or are they still in that zone? What a straight man to man here, it looks like. Yeah, man to man, he's coming out of the zone. Good switch up by Cheney, man shot the last time. Let's see if LaSalle gets a better one. Do they recognize it's straight man to man? Haywood and McKee. Mott with Ivy. Mott's going to take him on the run. Good help, Derek Petit. Weak side rebound, Eddie Jones. So it's man to man with help principles, as always. Good job rebounding the ball, Eddie Jones. Mott had a pretty good flyer at the basket. Jones staying strong, getting the rebound. Under three, and it's nine points for the Owls. And the Owls will run clock. The South sat in the zone all night long, and held themselves in the basketball game. 2.45 and counting. Shot clock at four, so Brunson will fly. Way short again to Key, and he's pushed. Well, what happens there, and you're in the zone, when you see the shot going up, you got to find a block out. Now, they want to know about a 35 second clock. It did not hit the rim. Here's Brunson shooting the ball with the 35 second clock going down. It's an air ball. I don't know if that horn should have gone off. No, there was two on the shot clock when the foul came. Oh, when the foul came. On the foul of McKee. Okay. There was four on when uh, Brunson let it go. Okay. Yeah. 
hit the rim and they reset the Certainly. Shot. See them. Can we, the referees have come over. Can we roll that back? Do we have the time inset? Referees have come over. We don't have the time inset, but there were two on the timer when McKee accepted the basket. And it was fouled. Yeah. So I'm, I'll play referee for you there a little bit. LaSalle still wants a 35 second violation, but they're not going to get it. Well, Larry Rose, you're not going to get any Christmas gifts Sorry. or cards from Speedy Morris anymore. Never did before. Several of us at prison have been on the Morris family Christmas list. McKee the free throw, and the lead is a 10. Which also makes Aaron McKee one of the top players in the Atlantic 10. He leads the Atlantic 10 in free throw shooting and down the stretch, the man goes to the line, just nails him. And he's a lake foul shooter, isn't he? I love the way he gets that whole body involved. Gets the extension, gets the ball over the front of the rim all the time. Two and a half remaining, 11 points. Straight man to man, Jones and Towns, double team Batie. This shows the NBA scouts that Jones can play that man-to-man. -man. <laughs> you usually don't play a guy that far out. It's eight points on Towns' three-pointer. He's got 16. Jones accepts. Ivy to McKee to Batie. Locked from behind by Towns. Quick hoop, we've still got a game. Kareem crosses, bounce passes. Newton is tied up. And it's first and goal. Possession arrow favors the Temple Owls. Maybe you want Kareem to think about pulling up there instead of the flashy bounce. Exactly. He's got to take the shot right there. Tough to make that pass, even though he's trying to be an unselfish player and get the ball into his teammates, maybe for a better shot. You got to get the shot opportunity. You can't risk the turnover under two minutes. Now, Ivy is on the floor as a 25% free throw shooter. But that'll probably be the last time he touches the basketball. Instead, they foul Brunson. So if you're going to foul right away, you have to have the awareness that you've got a bad foul shooter on the floor. Well, the, the Temple Owls shoot at roughly a 65% clip from the foul line. Brunson's going to line 72. As we said, Aaron McKee leads the league at 86%. Eddie Jones doesn't shoot the ball that well right now at only 62, but Brunson's at the line, trying to extend that Owls lead. Rattles out. LaSalle tonight has 11 three-point shots. And a tip by McKee. That's gotta, yeah, that's gotta drive Speedy Morris crazy as Aaron McKee was the only Temple Owl on the foul line for LaSalle and Spores, and he gets the rebound. And a classy putback, 26-footer Kareem, and Batia low to the top. Is fouled by Burke, and gives him a look. And Paul says, kind of personal, <laughs> above his head. Paul's no fool. No, Paul at 6-1, Derek Batia at 6-9, Well, Batia's been very active tonight. His offense, especially on second chance points, a key element to what looks now like a Temple House victory. This to tie his career high. All right, Derek, get, get your career high right here with the 20th point. People around the league will die when they see Dirk Petit gets his 19th point when they don't get much in the inside. They're going to be worried uh -oh. about Temple. <laughs> Uh-oh. Derek Newton gives to Burt. Another long three is four feet short. And Paul Burt has just been pushed out of his range all night long. That's what Temple will do. Cheney came out of the zone defense, went man-to-man -man when he knows that LaSalle has to fire from distance. Good move by Cheney to show a different defense. McKee 
goes to Ivy, and they want to foul Ivy, and they do. Paul Burke recognizes bad foul shooter there. One oh six remaining, eleven point ball game. Jason Ivy to try to work on that percentage. Amazing. They shoot hundreds and hundreds of free throws. And you see a kid that's 25%. You know, he tries his best and they bang out. All that should have gone in for the kid. <laughs> Good rotation went in. Should have gone in. Burke, 21 feet away, front of the rim. Eddie Jones keeps it alive. Derek Petit ahead of the pack, but Aaron says, not this time, big fella. Less than a minute remaining. They're trying to foul. And Brunson will walk to the free throw line. So a game that really never got engaged this evening, Eddie. Well, LaSalle made a couple runs as John Jay looks on. Temple took everything they had. Temple sometimes did not look good in their offensive set, but then when they needed it, they come right in and get real good looks at the basket from a high-low situation. A well, correction, Derek Petit has 17 points, has not tied his career high. It's okay, Dirk. 17 points is terrific. And four owls in double figures. Towns over Ivy. Banks it. And then fouls Eddie Jones. Well, it was 55-49 Temple. LaSalle down five with the basketball at the 523 mark. John Cheney's defense goes, as Eddie said, man to man. They say, well, we don't have to worry about foul difficulties in the final five minutes, so we'll come right out and get you. And they quickly go on a 10 to three run and put it away. And that's nothing to Speedy Morris is when he had those good uh, Lionel Simmons, Overton, Randy Woods teams. Same thing, he got Temple to get out of that zone, went man to man and Temple did an excellent job. They can play the man to man if they're called upon. And LaSalle now playing it out. Blocked by Jones into the hands of Ivy. Fouled by Newton with 23 seconds remaining. And I think Jason caught a finger in the eye. Rubbing up the left one, but he looks okay. Called on Van Teesley. Thirty-nine three-point attempts. Wow. 39, what are the Explorers average in three-point attempts? 24. Well, they knew if they were going to win, right? It's their only chance. Their only chance against Temple was to get hot from the outside. Ivy finally gets one to fall. He's got six points. Burke for three. In front of the iron, gets his own. Towns air balls it. And one final rebound belongs to Derek Petit. Ahead of the pack to the Eagle! And Aaron McKee with his head up all the way, saw Eddie Jones streak into the basket, and the fans love it. And this one is now over. It was Temple wire to wire. They win it 68 to 55. The 11th ranked Temple Owls run their record to 10 and 2. LaSalle falls to below 500. They're 7 and 8. Handshakes all around. No smile yet on the face of John Cheney. He'll save that for later. We'll come back, wrap it up live from the Civic Center in just a moment. Roberto Clemente was one of baseball's greatest heroes, both on and off the field. Known as one of baseball's greatest outfielders, Roberto was a 12-time All-Star, won four batting titles, 